Happy Wednesday and welcome back to the Lord and Arts channel. I'm John Lorden. Thank you so much for spending some time with me here on this special searchlight update. It's not always that we have the wheels of justice start turning in these cases, but for this particular case, thankfully, I think we're there. We're talking about the case of missing person Tony Walsh, missing from Truro, Nova Scotia. He went missing in August of 2019. Uh, for people that aren't familiar, of course, we'll have a link in the description box down below to the original episode, but we'll also just do a little bit of a recap here. Starting over at globalnews.ca, Peter Anthony Walsh, known to his family and friends as Tony, was last seen on August 23, 2019 in Truro, Nova Scotia. Police say on the morning and afternoon of the day he was last seen, Walsh is known to have driven to various locations, including Millbrook, Truro, and Debert. It was reported that he was last spotted getting into a truck in the Truro area. His vehicle, a beige 1999 Chrysler Sebring, was later found in a business parking lot in downtown Truro. His disappearance was initially being investigated as a missing persons case, but on January 20th, 2020, police say evidence led investigators to reclassify the matter as a homicide. That was despite the fact that they had not found his body at that point. RCMP have not publicly disclosed what resulted in that decision, but told Global News they do have at least one suspect in the case. And this article is actually from back March 2020, uh, right before the world changed, essentially. And maybe that's why it's it's been this long until this kind of update. But some updates are worth it. And here at the Facebook page for the Royal Canadian Mounted Police in Nova Scotia, they're very quick to give us the update we're looking for. Northeast Nova Scotia RCMP major crime has charged a man in the homicide of Peter Anthony Tony Walsh that occurred back in August 2019. In December 2019, Tony's family appealed to the public for information and investigators continued to receive tips and information as part of this process. Through the information and evidence collected, investigators determined that Tony was the victim of a homicide and another public appeal was issued by investigators in March 2020. I just want to stop for a second and point out uh, we actually started the episode of Searchlight that we released with the family asking for help from this appeal that they did. Law enforcement being very clear here, them doing that, that round of press, um, that raising of awareness they think that is directly responsible for the tips that came in that got them to the next level of figuring out who actually did this. And here we are now with, with an arrest and charges. Since March 2020, RCMP investigators have continued to gather information, collect evidence, and follow up on tips. And on June 16th, 2022, Northeast Nova RCMP major crime arrested a 56-year-old Londonderry man in relation to the homicide. The RCMP has charged John Alfred Cook of Londonderry with first degree murder. On June 16th, RCMP investigators also located human remains in the Londonderry area. Investigators believe these remains to be those of Tony Walsh based on all of the evidence and information collected. The RCMP's thoughts continue to be with the Walsh family. So essentially, that round of press is the catalyst that starts this, gives them more information. They're working on those leads. And finally, we, we get here where we have an arrest. Um, over at cbc.ca, a quote from Corporal Chris Marshall. I do know, based on the location of the remains, all the information collected around where the remains were was what gives us a very strong belief that it is, in fact, Tony's and not another person's remains that we located. But until the DNA comes back, we can't say 100%. Police have not disclosed any motive. His sister did release some information. Uh, victim sister says accused knew her brother. This over at iHeartRadio.ca. According to Tony's sister, Sarah Walsh Turner, the accused and her brother were known to each other. She says, as difficult as it is to hear the news, there is some solace in knowing charges have been laid and the body appears to be located. Uh, we do have a little video clip of her talking about this that I want to share with all you guys. 
we will be able to lay Tony to rest the way we want to um, in the location that we want to. So it's where we are, you know, we're, we're happy for that. Um, it's just been a lot. She's obviously still trying to deal with this information and you can see even having a little bit of a positive aspect in terms of knowing we think we're, we're pretty certain based on the information out there knowing where tony is that they're going to be able to lay him to rest uh still a lot of pain around this and processing what was done to him what happened and unfortunately they're going to be dealing with that pain i'm sure through whatever court processes happen around this as well so of, of course our hearts go out to the family on this. Um, let's continue with just a little more information on this. The family says they're thankful for all the support they've received over the years in their fight to find answers. They also say they're grateful for various RCMP investigators and departments who never gave up on the case. This is the courthouse and thank you saltwire.com. John Alfred Cook made a brief appearance in Truro Provincial Court Monday morning, that was June 20th, appearing via telecom, Cook waived his right to hear the charge read, stating he was aware and understood the charge. In an appearance that lasted less than 10 minutes, the next court date of August 2nd, where Cook is expected to enter a plea, was selected. So more information will probably come out. I'm curious to see what the relationship is here. Um, it's obviously this is in some way a friend that the family was aware of. Uh, why were they driving around? Why is he in someone else's vehicle? Why is his vehicle left in a store parking lot? Uh, a lot of questions that I'm sure the family and the, and the public are looking for answers. I uh, just wanted to end this with a little quote from his mother. Tony is a son, brother, father, uncle, and friend to many, and we all miss him dearly. So uh, please keep this family in your hearts and minds rolling forward over the next few months. Of course, we'll keep you updated if anything else big happens on this case. Thank you so much for spending some time with us here. I'll be back on Friday with a brand new mystery for you here on the Lord and Arts channel.